Hey guys. So we are going. I got Annie behind the camera, Lynette behind Hi. the press, and I'm I'm supervising. <laughs> We're gonna make this ring. <laughs> Lynette's gonna show you how to do it. So this is a ring by Larder and Son. They were out of Manhattan. They opened up in the early 1900s and they were a tier one manufacturer. And they, some of their clients included Tiffany and company. They produced a lot of their class rings for, the, for West Point and the Naval Academy. And they, they did all the way up until the end. Um, we actually have those hubs. And nope, you can't have one. <laughs> so we're not going to reproduce Such that kind tease, of Kevin. yeah we're not going to reproduce military rings no um this is a nice delicate and what people would call it is a signet ring but these this is just the top of the ring they were designed to put stones up there you could engrave your initials if you wanted but they were designed to have a stone put on top so i've done these with put round bezels on top even though it's an oval, um, they work great. I did a couple for my wife. Uh, you can put you can put an oval on there, obviously, but you can put a cab. You can put a faceted stone. A ring top. A ring top. Even you could put little no designs on top. Like this has little roses in it. So if you were to add a rose to the top of that, that would look fantastic. Um, you could put your initial saw out an initial on top that would look really cool let's see what mm -hmm. we got here i don't know if it'll fit right oh <laughs> oh that's a little, little rose big. cut it's yeah like that's, a rose cut spinel that's really pretty you can make yourself self a gothic rose ring that that's, that's really pretty really i think lovely. we need to do that so don't worry like when you're making a piece of jewelry you don't need to worry about the borders of this. I get all this all the time. Well, how big of a stone does it take? Well, it doesn't really matter. You can just make it fit. I mean, obviously there's limits, but just make it fit. So this is what you're going to get. This is the female die. And Lynette is going to show you how to make this ring. It's very easy. This stuff is, there is no easier way to make a ring. Let me tell you. <laughs> with our little kit here and uh the pusher so um this is part of the humpback ring kit and we're only going to use these two pieces in the kit um i think for this particular mm -hmm. demo but it does come with a couple of other pieces beyond these two you can check it out on our don't site don't really need them all um i have already pre-cut out this blank that fits um mm -hmm. this particular ring it's you obviously want excess metal so that you have enough to push down into the form it's 12 gauge yep yeah, so this is 12 gauge sterling we have not annealed it yet we might have to anneal halfway through the process but we're mm -hmm. going to go ahead and start without annealing first and just see how it goes so you can see it's quite thick you don't want to be chintzy with your metal you don't want to try to press 20 gauge sheet metal down into here you guys it's just not going to make a nice ring um and you're gonna, it's gonna fight you. So make sure you're using enough metal to get the job done well. And yeah, we're gonna use small pieces of urethane. And, and little pieces of paper. Maybe some paper towel. <laughs> Probably paper towel. Okay. If I have my way, it'll be paper towel. All right. <laughs> All right. Kevin's gonna tell me what to do. Oh, okay. So let's set this somewhere where we don't lose it. Otherwise, nobody's gonna get a ring. Yeah, let me put that on there. Yeah, otherwise the things get sucked into the void. <laughs> so I, I think Guys, you should... don't let us forget it's on my desk. Okay. So what you're going to do is just start off with the pusher and just drive it down. So... And you can leave your hand in there and hold it. Because if you were to actually squish your hand while pulling down on the lever, there's no hope for you. Can I go further? Yeah, go all the way. There you go. And before you take it out, go ahead and push the sides. So here, we'll just take out the pusher. And let me show it to him. This is where we're at. 
So you can still see we've got some thickness there, but we've popped up on the ends here. Don't take it out. You're going to go ahead and push it down. I didn't bring the... That's okay. The Just bars. drive it right up into we'll the plate. Onto the upper platen. Another thing, let me we got to talk about centering work. Yeah. When, you, when we talk about centering your work, you got to center it front to back, side to side. You can't just center it like that's in the center side to side, but not, but not backwards. I mean, we've put braces to help prevent things, but if you don't center your work and I, and this isn't just my press, this is any press. This is all presses. If you don't center your work, you're going to shoot that thing out of your press. There is no press on earth that can handle off center loads. Um, so the humpback ring kit, it comes with a, a steel like bar mm -hmm. that you can put in here. We're just going to push into the upper platen because I didn't grab that piece from the back. <laughs> it's stuck to the powder ring. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. All right. So that's so there's after our ring. one push. That's one push. Or Not two. Not too shabby. Yeah. So, I think what we should do before we even kneel again, Your let's thing? get some, a yeah, paper or paper towel, whatever, <laughs> whatever you feel like. See, what we need to do, we need to get the center. We need to push the center in. There's plenty of material here, but we just need to push it in. So, Lynette is going to wad up a little tiny piece of paper towel. No special use... technique there. It's yeah, just wadding paper towel. <laughs> Did I not lower it all the way? And we're going to lower the ram. You could also put a small piece of urethane. That won't, that's going to be too, too big. big. Yeah, you it's need like big. one and a half this thickness. Yeah. And you can put your urethane in a shear and just cut it. Is that too big? No. It compress? Just, it'll compress. Let me, I'm going to reduce your paper towel because <laughs> it doesn't need to be that big. That oh, big. Yeah, I was way off. I don't know. We'll probably need more, but. Okay. Is that centered? <laughs> it out I bet we got it just about almost almost that looks really nice so we have a choice dare we try one more pressing I think we should with more paper with more paper so let me get let's get some more paper since you I'm gonna the reason I'm paper? asking you guys to use paper is because you guys spend enough money with us already you don't need to be I'm not trying to sell you something weird or, you know, we just use what's available. I cut up the shipping boxes. Yeah. They work the, great. Use my shear of scissors. Cut I up. use my urethane crumbs. I never mm -hmm. use paper. Yeah. But there's, you know, I, you guys I'm, find what works best for you. Yeah. You're just trying to fill that cavity. <laughs> beautiful nice so we didn't even anneal well, let me see what about the very top though it's not quite yeah. there it's not, it's not, it's not quite, quite there. there so we probably anneal at this point we're gonna have to anneal it to form it round anyway yeah. so i'm gonna anneal it and we'll press one more time this press is set up for 10 tons okay it's not like i have some super power press here i actually set my press lower than what you guys do that what we ship them out at. 
because technique is everything. Mm -hmm. You can you can fight it all you want trying to do it. You could hit this with a hundred tons and have no results at all. But it looks really good. All so right. let's anneal it. Let's anneal. Like our soldering station. <laughs> I know. Don't let me light your bench on fire. Did you turn the gas on? Yes. Okay. Somebody, man, I need my what electric upgrade. What I didn't upgrade. turn on was the pickle, though. That's awesome. I've been really impressed with all the work you guys have been producing. It's gotten so much better. I mean, over the years, when we first started offering these dyes, um, it was brand new. Yeah, it was brand new. But I would show the some of the people who'd helped me get all this collection together. Um, they were horrified. <laughs> they, but now they're impressed. I told them, just give me time. Everyone's gonna get better, and now. The stuff's <laughs> as nice as what they produced a hundred years ago. I'm not gonna you guys follow are doing her. Amazing work. She's going to clench it. Oh yeah, you can show them our new die corner. Oh yeah. Yeah, check it out. We've got a new shelf. The only place I've got, we're gonna start building shelves in the bathroom next. We're gonna have to. I'm not kidding. And I want to put some in my wife's office, but she is not down with it. <laughs> She's not being a team player. So He's I having have, nothing to do with the hoarding. I have one more wall in my office. I know. And he's taking hits for the team. Absolutely. Yep. Even though we will never use 90% of this nonsense. 90% of this. I think that's being optimistic. I think maybe 99. Yeah. <laughs> Some of it is just cool. That latest collection was not jewelry related. Oh my but gosh, what they is were just that? So Isn't that cool, that one turtle? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I want it. Look at that neat thing. Yeah. There's so many. That's the top of a Shell gas station pump from the early 1900s. The beginning of Shell gas. And yes, this is the original Woodstock. When you played in a band at the concert... And I'm not talking about Woodstock 2. I'm talking about 1960s Woodstock. You got that. We won't be making we that. We won't be making that. Uh, yeah, they sell for a lot of money. The originals these. are a lot of money, and I, I don't want to cause troubles. These are... Picture frames. Picture frames. Absolutely those beautiful. We should do a run of them. We can get some special metal in, and we can do a run of picture frames. Show them the police badge. This is, so you ever heard the term copper? Well, these were in copper. It was a big copper star. This is the real deal. This is 1900, Los Angeles police, and they were in copper. Pretty cool. We said a future museum. I think we are the museum. Yeah. I think Kevin has created. Of, uh, of <laughs> unimportant things. <laughs> that would be the name. We have some important Pick things. Pickle. Oh, yeah. She, she believes in pickling her Someone work. forgot to turn the pickle on. No. <laughs> yeah. We have, a, we have okay. a few important dyes, but a majority of it is unimportant things. The Museum of Unimportant. We have lots of um, 25 years service. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, look at all these. This is all your real estate badges. You can see how I feel about them. They're on the floor still. I'm not going to display those. No. I don't. I don't have the heart to chuck them, but I don't know what to do with them. Honestly, really don't. Let's one say. Real estate. Realtor association. Associate. Yep. Yeah, a lot of these. It's just nonsense. We have so many fraternal orders <laughs> and sororities. <laughs> it's insane. Class rings. Yeah, class. And I, I have been good about not bringing in class rings. Let me tell you. <laughs> the offerings for class rings are thick. It's almost like, like there's get... one for every year, for every... <laughs> Balfour had 100,000 square feet because of space jammed with nothing but class oh. rings. And they scrapped the whole place. 
the entire place was liquid, literally recycled, which sounds horrible, but it doesn't really. They're just class rings, every yeah. size, every shape, you know, 10 different sizes for every style of ring. It was horrible. All right, you guys, we annealed it after two pressings. We're going to stick it in for a third. Mm -hmm. I don't know if your paper wadding <laughs> skill is really all that. I mean, <laughs> Okay, fair enough. I don't <laughs> ever use paper, Kevin. I'm only using I, it because you're telling me to. If I was doing this at home, I'd be using little crumbly bits of urethane. There we go. Or That's, aluminum foil. I we, use aluminum foil at home. Here they are getting these mixed messages. I know. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's almost like you use what works it, for you. Yeah. And use whatever you've got. I hate that phrase, there's more than one way to, to skin, skin the cat. The cat. Like, yeah. There's got to be a better way to say that, but it's... It's the true. essence of that statement is true. Yeah, I, I like cats. So tell us in the comments if you're team paper towel, <laughs> team urethane, team aluminum foil, or team something else. Team lead. Oh, yeah. don't, don't be team lead. I think that's perfect. Yeah, yeah that looks really good. So our next step is to saw it out, and then we'll form it, and then... Did we get the all the way down the side, or do we need to press um, the sides again? Yeah, we probably need to press the sides one more time. And then um, maybe we'll do a bezel. Let me show you how... Oh, yeah, hit it. What? Go ahead. We have team urethane and aluminum foil. Said I'm team leftover cardboard from Potter USA shipping box. So no one's on team paper towel? <laughs> Not uh, yet. I take the path of least resistance <laughs> in almost all cases. It's it easily seems accessible. To be the right. Yeah. <laughs> we think something weird happens? No. I don't think. Let me see. Those little roses are hard to see. Did I um, did I register it the wrong way or are they good? No, they're good. You did fine. They look great. But what can happen, so sometimes when you're pressing something, so let's say you, that's why I'm always saying start in the middle first and work your way out. Because if you start on the outside and work your way in, you can actually get a uh, mold shift. You can sh yeah. smear stretch your, it. you can stretch it. In a weird dis in a weird area, so I can't you, tell. If you, those little... No, you did you did fine. Okay, they're fine. But yeah, so you've got a nice thick ring. It's gonna look great. So gonna when that's gonna out. saw it out, and um, <laughs> let's go look at some new dyes. Sure. So is it, if, if you ask five bench jewelers how to do something, you'll get 37 different answers, and all of them work. <laughs> yeah, so it's check this true. out. So this is a ring die. This is the same thing we're doing, except this is just a little bit different version. I've seen, it's interesting. These, this style is very European. All the stuff that I've seen come out of France and Germany looks like this this stuff came out of san francisco but it was made the people who made this were trained by a guy named theo who was trained in forsheim germany so all of the dyes look german it's very interesting so these here this is early providence rhode island these aren't old i mean these are like these aren't very old. We're talking, this is like 1950s. They kept making this style ring all the way up until they closed, which is amazing because the people who trained, it was like a consistent, uh, when I went to visit these guys, I was so impressed. They were still building dyes how they did it when they were taught by the same guy a hundred years earlier. And they hadn't really changed. Where in other, you know, like back East, where you have a lot of influence, because they were just, the, they were like the only company, it's Van Cranist, they were like the only company still striking dyes on the East Coast, on the West Coast. They were it. 
There's no one else. And they were, so they were insulated from influences. They were still doing it with a drop hammer. I mean, even Providence, Rhode Island, those guys were using hobbing presses by the 60s. And, uh, but yeah, so this is sort of a hybrid of it. You can see how they didn't do the, the shank as long because it becomes, this is a pain in the butt, let me tell you. Um, this style here is more of how they were done in by larder and a lot of the stuff this style came out of new from what i can tell it came out of the uh out of the fine jewelry industry mostly larder and son out of new york this style of ring where they lay it out flat instead of trying to you know get the whole thing and this is what uh, this is what we're, we're doing, doing right now is using that show, style I'm, let me show you the hubs for these they're crazy Follow me. Um, Julie, yes. So Lynette is currently sawing out the stamping, and then we'll go back in there and show you what she's doing next. So these are the hubs that came out of Van Cranist. Interesting, huh? But can you imagine us trying to sell you guys big giant V dies? No. I can't. So what we're going to do... I'm gonna, we're gonna reproduce these, but we're gonna do it, you're gonna have to solder the shank on. We're gonna press the tops. So you'll have to do the, uh, solder your own shank on it, because if we wanna use, these are really cool styles too. These are all um, delicate engagement rings. Like high end. Yeah, this stuff, their jewelry, if you Google them, their work comes up. They were some of the best in the country. And they're still in business. I just went out and visited them. They're still running, making jewelry. You can order a piece. They do beautiful work. And they strike it off the original dies and everything. This is just some of the extra stuff, but they're not running this line anymore. But this is a whole line of jewelry. I love this one. So these all had diamonds in the top and they're all positioned. So you'd have had to have been a, a diamond setter to make these pieces, but we'll show you how to do it. You pave the diamonds in. It's really great. They're really nice, but it's interesting when you look at, so here's Van Cranist. Here's, here's larder. So this is a little bit different style of larder, but we're using for the most part, the, this style here. Yeah. This is the most forgiving style. The easiest to use. Easiest for everybody. So that's what we're doing. You can see the difference. Cool, huh? Then, I bet Lynette's still sawing. So let's, go, let's go look at this French, French one stuff. And it's crazy. It makes these look almost reasonable. <laughs> it is pretty neat. You can see who and where a piece came from. Just by the way they made the hub. So where is that? I've only got, I don't have a whole lot of rings out of Paris, unfortunately. Um, it might be in, in the drawer. No, it's a big old tall thing. It's ridiculous. I sunk it. It was, it was pure hell. I was on that thing for a while. <laughs> where, there it is. Oh my gosh. Look at these. Yeah. This thing is beautiful. Look at that. I sunk this thing. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, I got the die around here someplace. But look how tall that yeah. is. Yeah. These are from Villamon. They're just, these are beautiful rings. That is just a work of art. But check it out. Actually, I do have quite a few rings. They moved into this style. This is the early 1900s, like this is early here. This is more of the German style, but this is the early 1900s. They started making stuff, well, I bet you they came up with this because a lot of the uh, stuff out of Providence, Rhode Island switched to this. Let's go compare these two pieces to the Providence ones. Oh, the yeah. The early Providence ones. But they're nearly identical. Nearly identical. This is early Providence, Rhode Island. They were knocking each other off. Providence. Now, this is Paris. Paris. Now, the one difference is with the Providence stuff, 
the body of notice how there's different colors like here let's look at yeah, that cool. see how the top is black and the bottom is rust i haven't cleaned these but you can see the difference in color they're made of the top of this is tool steel the bottom of this is just wrought iron so leave it to the americans to figure out how to make something cheaper the mm -hmm. french however made their entire block like back in this time tool steel was really expensive this is before the bessemer process so to get a lump of tool steel high carbon steel it was very very expensive more than it is now and they made their entire die out of tool steel the americans they would just do the top and then they'd forge weld it together like an anvil the anvils the american anvils are done this way too it's got a uh wrought iron body with a tool steel top. Somewhere so, we have some where the top is just cracked off. Yeah, oh yeah, we have some. Completely. Here's a good one, you can see the weld. See the weld line right there? That's where they're top. So they save a lot of money by putting wrought iron down here. Wrought iron is cheap. Tool steel is expensive. Yeah, you can see it all the way You across. can see the line. But the French, when this stuff, this stuff here, these pieces, this was made for the middle class and the working classes of America and the world. The French stuff, this wasn't made for the middle class. This was made for the wealthy of Europe. So, different market entirely. Who's the, who made this one? Parent? Can't really tell. Just the coloring and the patina on these is beautiful. You, I mean, I was going to say, you feel like you're holding history, but you are. Yeah, that's 1800s. Yeah. You can see, like, the strikes of mm -hmm. the person who forged. This the... is all hand-forged. Yeah. Same with these. These were forged under a big hammer. They had to hand... Well, they, they were forged under a pneumatic or a, a steam hammer. Mm -hmm. So let me go put these treasures away and go check <laughs> on, the, on uh, Lynette. Just hover right over... <laughs> Hey, Linda. I've been told to hover. I'm done. I just, Kevin never does finishing. <laughs> and it's a lot easier to finish this, like sand the edges and sand the inside before you bend it around. Yeah. So I was trying to sneak in some finishing before. <laughs> That's a up. really good tip, though. Um, it's a lot easier to do it when it's flat. flat. Yeah, cleaning up the edges mostly flat so this so is tickled. not finished um but it was a little gnarly on the back side from like just being pushed with the paper towels and stuff so i smoothed out a lot of the roughness um if i was going to do this for myself and take a little bit more time than i can sneak from kevin <laughs> i would use some like some sanding <laughs> wheels Oh, these and sanding like, drums? I yeah. love these. They come in a million different grits. Um, when you wear it out, you just tear off a layer. Yeah. Because it's just a, a tight coil. You can get these from any supplier. Rio. Auto Fry, all of mm -hmm. them. Um, and then after going through a couple grits of those, I'd probably just refine with a silicone wheel. But... Um, the boss is here, so we have to keep working on this ring <laughs> instead of finishing. <laughs> oh, you saw that out? I and sawed it out, and I did a little, I snuck in a little bit of sanding. Cool. All right, let's round it up. Okay. Should we anneal it? I don't think I don't we think need so. to, because we, we should... annealed it and you don't... only pressed once. Yeah. So let's, um, you want your ring to be, very, like, the beauty of a die struck ring is... It is work hard. That's why die struck jewelry lasts okay, forever. Oh, that's okay, but it's not gonna. The more, so like a cast piece of jewelry, they start wearing immediately. That's why you see grandma's jewelry around. It was die struck. If you've ever worked in a jewelry store and had to size a die struck ring, it's misery. Oh, that cylinder is tall. Yeah, I put an extra high one in here because we had it. Or do you want to use your ring bender? Oh, you want to use let's, this or let's use the ring bender. Okay. Because, um, I don't know. We're thinking <laughs> about producing them. I don't know, I said it. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Mm hmm It definitely wasn't the top secret project I was working on. Hey, hi, everybody. You want to be... <laughs>
Thanks, Kelsey. <laughs> oh, it's not put together. It's all right. Yeah, we're thinking about producing it, huh? Thinking about it. Thinking about it. May or may not be what all those parts, parts. are. <laughs> Maybe. It's going to be it's the not, first time we produce not, something. Okay. It'll be the first time we've actually produced something that'll have instructions and everything. Ahead it's, of time. Ahead of maybe time. not. Maybe what all of these bins are for. Maybe. May or may not. <laughs> so, let me. So what you got here, this is your... Small tooling adapter. Small tooling adapter. You can tell who wrote the directions, right? <laughs> and made. And this is One your. <laughs> Let's see. Did they include the O-ring? Are you gonna mess them up by getting into all this stuff, Kevin? Should we just oh, go yeah. Back yeah. Back to definitely. The... You're gonna. Uh, let's just do the former. Yeah. Okay. Let's just do the former. Okay. You'll, to avoid you'll messing see this it up. Soon, guys. Yeah. That's your sneak peek of the. Thing that we may or may not be making. Yeah, we may or may not be making. <laughs> Remember, I've sat on 50 rolling mills too, so <laughs> it's this possible. Is true. Annie will kill you if <laughs> you do that so, with this. Alright. Oh, you want me to run this part? Um, or I can. Yeah, do it. So this is the old version of our bracelet former. Yeah, the frame. The frame is different. Um, that's it works exactly the same. All the formers mm -hmm. so this, work with the modern or the current style. Do you remember mm -hmm. what this is called? Ring, ring bending. Former, ring, ring bending, bending. tool. Um, and it's just it attaches a with a magnet to your frame. If you have the newer frame, it works the same, like Annie said. And we're just going to use it. Um, you could bend this around a ring mandrel. It's just harder because it's so thick. And it's so stiff, so this makes it easier. The new bending machine over there works it real easy. You start in the middle or you start on the end? Start in the middle. And you can see she's not pressing it too hard. You don't want your urethane to be exploded, su be super puffed out. You don't want to squish it too hard because it'll it'll blow out. This just gets you a good start before you get onto a ring mandrel with it. It helps you, really, it's good in helping you form the thicker sections. Yeah, yeah the heaviest part. Okay, that's probably close to as much as I can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And still be able to get this off here. Yep. Um, and then I have a ring mandrel at my bench. Mm -hmm. We will hover over Lynette's shoulder. Try to give you a, a point of view. And I actually did not measure the ring straight off the die, so I don't know what size this is going to end up being. Best to round it up first, then size it. Yeah. But if I don't trim it, I don't know what size it comes off straight off the die. Probably like a nine. It's pretty big. Yeah. 10. Lost it. 11. Um, and I need to... I didn't file those ends flat. And I don't know if I have a file. I got lots of files. <laughs> you want a sharp one or a dull one? Uh, like a number two flat, if you got it. I'm not particular. Here. I don't have a handle on it. Thank That's you. just how I roll. <laughs> That's okay. Most of mine have um, wine corks as handles. Because they fit in your hand really nice and they're soft. So you drink a lot of wine? I don't drink any wine. 
But you have friends. Um, but I have <laughs> friends that drink wine. And they make perfect free little handles. Because <laughs> somebody said, oh, a clean bench. Sort of. Oh, this is Sweet. tidy. You can actually Super see Super tidy. These two are going to be moving into their new facilities mm. without me. It's going to be... It's going to be glorious. <laughs> it's going to be like so tidy and neat. I'm going to go over there for inspiration. And like, I feel bad about the... myself. Nah. So really we're not worried about this being perfectly round right now. All we're worried about is bringing these ends together so that they're completely flush. Um, you don't want the ends kind of sticking out like this where you have a gap because if they're perfectly flush, you'll have a really nice, strong, tight solder seam that's not going to pop on you when you start forming it round. So you want to bring them down almost straight across. We're going to be doing videos like this just about every day. A lot. And then you can kind of do the light trick where you hold it up to the light. And if you see any light coming through your seam, um, you want to clean it up so that the ends fit together perfectly. And this actually looks good, so I'm not going to mess with it. But if, if there was like a little bit of light and I could see some coming through and it wasn't perfectly fitted together, one trick that you can do is you can just take a thin saw blade and saw right through the seam and the saw blade basically acts as a tiny little file and it files both sides of that seam and so once you've mm -hmm. sawn through it if there's tension on it they'll come together perfectly snap. flat yeah but we don't need to do that this looks good get some solder solder it up and then we'll round it out yeah i make them bring their own supplies <laughs> He doesn't. I'm just... It's nice to know where things are. Yeah, like, look at his... You guys, look, like, how do you find anything? I don't. I yell at Ian. I know Ian. I just my look at that, and I'm like, I just can't even. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone fun. works differently, though. And look at his flux. Look at this. It's all dried out. Yes. I'll go fill it with water. You I'll do it. <laughs> It's I, so interesting seeing yeah. different working styles because everybody's going to have their own. They're, they're going to be over with Craig. And Craig is another, if you guys don't know Craig Dabler, he is a fantastic goldsmith and he's another neat Nick. The two of us could never share a shop together because mm -hmm. Craig would murder me. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> I was trained by slobs. So it just stuck. <laughs> the guys that I worked with. I don't like, know, Kevin. I kind of think you were just born this way. Um, <laughs> it's possible. So I have some um, flux nuggets there. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, gotta change that on. tip on this. You think so? Yes. Mm. I found that one difficult. I like big flame. Just a little story. Oh, you do you. When I first learned, when I, like my first tut taste of metalsmithing and jewelry design, we had these giant natural gas torches. The tips were like, I don't know, three quarters of an inch to an inch. And that is, but it was like, it was, it was pumped in, I'm massive. And so you learn heat control, torch control really quickly. And you have to use a massive torch tip. At home, I normally use the larger Smith torch. I don't use the little for most things, um, but this is fine. I um, use the little. I use the little for everything. So just what you're yeah, used to. What you're used to. What you prefer. Too hot. Okay. Try not to light anything on fire as I stand over gas tanks and <laughs> try not to hit my head on anything. It's like the story of our shop. I'm, I'm reaching a point where I feel like maybe we have too much. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it feels pretty roomy. Mm-hmm. Ish. 
<laughs> yeah, there's, we can still walk through the paths. If you're I'm careful. I'm going to be on the show someday, guys. Hoarders. Watch for my episode. It's Kenny's dream. I'm going to so, be huddled in a corner. I like to heat until my flux gets kind of clear and glassy and chills out from, like, bubbling, and then I add my solder. Mm -hmm. um, but that's another thing that's just, like, totally personal preference. And, oop, went to one side. I like to add my solder when it's all bubbling so it falls off to the side and I get frustrated. <laughs> okay, we have more than enough solder there. We'll have to do a little cleanup. But it's soldered. I'll go stick it in our pickle, which hopefully is hot now. Walking backward is a little a little frightening in here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be on that show. There's going to be little pathways. <laughs> Supposedly, uh, yeah, we've reached a point where OSHA might take notice. So Don't gonna, even mention it. Yeah, I know. I, I, we're actually going to start moving stuff. The guy had the auction at the new building, so mm -hmm. he's freeing up the space. So we're going to start moving, thinning the herd over here so that we can walk around. And Yeah, if you don't know, um, we bought a building, and it's a couple blocks over. Mm -hmm. And it's big. We're going to have a big... golf cart to go between them. <laughs> the company golf cart. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jeremiah's over there. He's renovating. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's he's handy. Yeah, very. He doesn't play well with others, but he's, he works great by himself. <laughs> okay, so you can see the solder join. It's fine. There's definitely some excess solder there. So we'll um, zip that off really quick with a sanding wheel, and then we'll form this round. I like to remove the excess solder first before forming so that I'm not like beating my solder blob into my metal mm -hmm. and making it harder for me to get off yep. later. Very good tip. See, I picked up a lot of bad habits working in a mall jewelry store <laughs> for a while. I would actually use the solder blob as extra metal to hammer it down to size it up to the size <laughs> oh, it needs to stop, be. Stop, Kevin. <laughs> Do you see the chuck? Mm, right here? Right in front of my face. Why aren't you using a quick change? Because I... That isn't... None of my tools fit the quick change. Mm. Because I'm not fancy enough for a quick change at home. You don't have one? No, I'm used to using this. And then you have to buy all the tools that fit the quick change. I, I have a drawer of them. I'm team quick change. Yeah, me too. <laughs> But I actually have one of each set up at all times. Um, you, you can take one of the ones in that drawer and there's a bunch. So I'm oh, not going to spend a ton of time on this, but I should have started by filing because there's kind of a blob on there. And what she's using, these are cartridge rolls. I've never seen those before. Oh, they're, oh, they're wonderful. They're so handy. I've always used, um, like made them myself. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. But this looks better. When I was an undergrad, our teacher didn't tell us that you could buy, um, what are Sanding those split stick? shank? Oh! Like the split yeah. man. Yeah. That's all thing. I ever used. He mm. made us take a nail and saw a line down the center of the nail and make our own. That sounds good. <laughs> it's good to learn how to do. Out, you could <laughs> buy them for like a dollar. We were like what <laughs> i think it's good to learn how to do things the hard mm -hmm. way first and then you feel spoiled after you we have an entire group of spoiled people here because <laughs> <laughs> everything's being done the industrial way carrie yeah what i had said before these are cartridge rolls oops it's kind Where of annoying because you have to buy them in a huge pack of you like do. 20 of them or something but then you'll only buy them once in your life or go in with a friend and like split a pack. Yep. They're warning you about your hair. Thank you. <laughs> I do have hair. I used to have long hair when I, I was a I should have tied it back. And I never got it wound up because I was aware of my hair. Whenever I teach classes, people always ask me um, if I have ever lit my hair on fire and I'm like, oh, interesting. No, <laughs> I, I had a good friend who was in grad school or I went to grad school with and she did get her hair caught in the flex shaft and it ripped out a nice. part of her scalp. Yep. Wow. She 
you kind of have to do a comb over? Um, it was front and center. There was nice. nothing to do. You could put a tattoo there. You could. A drawing of some fake hair. That looks fantastic, Lynette. So she's using a rawhide mallet. It's a little baby one. I don't like rawhide though. Um, I actually, <laughs> at home I use nylon. I love my nylon mallet. Do you guys, are you team nylon or team mallet. rawhide? A vegan mallet. I am team have both because I use I'm them. whatever is handy. That's a big, <laughs> that's a big ring right off yeah. the die. Yeah, it, it probably is. fits me. That's like an 11 and a half. It's wow. not perfectly round yet, but you can definitely, this ring will fit a variety of sizes. You can mm -hmm. definitely size that down. Yeah. So to do that, you would just measure the length that you want before you solder the seam closed and trim off from each end. You don't want to trim off. Well, I wouldn't trim off from one end because then your solder seam won't be like in the Inside. middle. So I'd trim a little bit off each end of the ring. Um, but obviously you do that before you solder it. Beautiful. Should we Let me polish check it, out. it and show them, or what do you want to do? Oh, that looks great. See, the beautiful thing is... It's not fully around yet. It looks really good, though. The shank is nice and even. It's And it's oh, super well strong. That's a great ring. It's very, like, kind of gothic Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, yeah. Gothic Beauty and the Beast vibes from it. It's not, like flourishy flower yeah, i guess because cutesy. it's more structured it's stylized rules. yeah since i haven't done anything i'll polish it <laughs> cool i don't like polishing put your hair up kevin yeah <laughs> so there's different kinds of buffs they're stitched and this is what you're going to do for your initial polishing then there's a loose buff. This is going to be your final polish. So we're going to start with a stitched buff. And you don't have to buy them this large. We just happen to have a large polishing machine. And what's the compound? We're going to start off. There's a couple you could use. This is called White Diamond. It's sort of like you can skip all the steps and it'll go shiny right away. It'll cut and polish. Or you can go the traditional route, which is Tripoli, mm -hmm. then Rouge. This is uh, green, green Rouge ice. for platinum. I like it. It works really good. So here we go. And I got, got big bars of it, too. So we'll, we'll go with some white diamonds. Now you don't want to cut into your this stuff. Just do your shank and all the, the filing mark areas. Yeah, because white diamond is pretty abrasive. Mm -hmm. You don't want to lose all of your hard work. Oh, what gauge did you start with? It was 12 gauge? Yep, yep. 12, 12 gauge sterling. you guys tell us? Are you team rawhide or team nylon? I want to know. Peter is paper mallets. It's a paper mallet. Is that rawhide? Gold paper. Gold, Gold paper. paper. Mm -hmm. Um, no. Team nylon. <laughs> Yay, Tammy. <laughs> I agree. takes three people to polish your ring. Yep. So when you're <laughs> polishing, you got to be careful that you don't dig out your solder joint. Okay? This wasn't really like sanded. Fully, yeah, we didn't. So. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so, this is a cool polisher. It's got brakes. So you hit that foot pedal and it stops it immediately. Lynette, five people on Team Nylon. Five. Kevin, people. I'm winning all of the battles. I know. All of them. <laughs> I know. My methods are not popular. They're rather <laughs> it's, savage. It's almost like you were learnt, you were taught in a I was different. I taught by a bunch of savages. Yeah. Well, Kevin has a much more practical jewelry yes. background than I do. I went to art school. Kevin worked as a goldsmith, so he's really the one you should be listening to. Uh, That's no, true. not necessarily. We can talk to you about concepts. Yeah. <laughs> 
How does your jewelry I, make you feel? I, I know what people like. <laughs> I've made tons handy. of it. Yep, so this is my green. Now, if you were really a uh, stickler, you would clean your ring before transferring over to the other uh, yeah. buff. Yes. But being that I've learned all sorts of bad habits from working in industry, yeah, just go right from one to the other. So, so I, I, I'm with Kevin on the creating your own sheet, though. Oh, whatever, Tammy. <laughs> okay, so I think we forgot to tell you guys that this ring die is available today as a daily die. Yeah. Oh yeah. So let me grab the hub. It again. looks great on my finger. This is this is sweet. It needs a stone. Yeah. We'll do that later. We'll do a stone later. Here's the hub. It's available. Um, it was probably available as of 10 o'clock this morning for 48 hours. Yep. And it works with the humpback ring kit. Super easy to press. You guys watched us do it. Three pressings. If right? you didn't watch it, then go back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it was just long. three. This is like a 30 minute job. Yeah, so if you weren't talking and fighting about mallets and paper towels. Right. <laughs> right. Important things. <laughs> this looks great. Yeah, so that is up on the website now. Should be. So um, our goal is to put out a video every day. And what we're going to have is this amazing, massive collection of Lynette's work. <laughs> and Andy's work. We're going to have like the biggest collection of these two artists' work ever. Because, oh, you got your, I think Annie's stuff's all in her office. Because or we're going to... So, um, yeah, my stuff's at home. So, yeah, because what we're going to do is we're going to have a wall of all this jewelry. This stuff has not been made uh, in 70, 80 years. So we're, and it, most of it's melted. If you've ever watched the South Park show, <laughs> the South Park cartoon about... <laughs> Well, no, there's this, there's this thing about gold, the gold buying operations, because you guys have seen them. They're on every corner, and they buy your gold. Well, they melted everything. Yeah. There's nothing left. It's sad. If it was it gold, really it got melted when it hit $2,000 an ounce. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that survived, oh, that's what's so wonderful about costume jewelry. It survives, because it's not worth anything as yeah. far as metal value. So it's worth something as far as design. But all of this kind of stuff, these were all made in carat gold. All these rings. When you bought this stuff, Larder made nothing but carat gold rings. Heavy carat gold rings. And that stuff got melted. So we're going to be, we're going to have the, an amazing collection from these two. Because we're going to make hundreds of pieces. And this guy too. Oh yeah, I'll make a few things. We'll, we'll talk him into finishing them. Yeah, I actually never finish anything. He'll just, <laughs> he'll just There's, polish I everything. I get, I get like 50, 60% there and then I just melt it and roll out, roll it out into something else to make another demo. That's funny. But, Be, that's exactly what I do when yeah. I make samples is mm -hmm. I'll melt it. melt it and redo it. So we need to save our samples so that we can have a wall. You know, I was at a, I was at a factory that has a wall of pattern boards, but they're beautiful pattern boards and they're all in silver. They're all Ooh. in sterling wow. and it was 4,000 ounces of silver. <clears throat> and I was offered to, I, they offered it to me at, at, you know, go at silver spot price, but it was. That's a lot. And, and they wanted to sell it with all the dyes. So it was really interesting because I bought, I. I, tr I wanted to buy just the master hubs, but they wanted to sell the whole thing as one big collection. Mm. And so I agreed, and my wife was about to have like a, a seizure because it was stupid amount of money. Cause, and I, even I was like starting to sweat going, God, what am I doing? Because I don't have the heart to melt all that mm -hmm. silver. They'd spent like a lifetime making all this jewelry. There were thousands of pieces. Mm -hmm. And... So we're walking out of there and we, we, we'd walk down the street a few blocks and then I get a phone call and, and the, the owner's like, hey, I'll sell you just the hubs. You don't have to buy it all. Because when you buy it all, you have to have a room like this. Yeah, it was. So if there were 4,000 samples, that meant there were 4,000 dyes. 4,000 hubs. And then about 10,000 trim tools. And yeah. So they just sold me the hubs. And I, the stuff is still there. Um and i'm hoping that he can hold out and not melt it <laughs> i think in my fortune. office we have some sample boards from 
France. Yeah, they're silver. That are silver also. Yeah. They're wow. gorgeous. So we're going to build our own silver sample board. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. And hopefully someone in the future won't melt them. Or sell them off on eBay one piece at a time. They'll be collectibles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Right, guys. Well, don't forget to go get yourself the rose ring today. It's available for 48 hours. And if we do a bezel later, we'll show you, but I'm not sure. We'll see. That's all. Bye. Bye.